All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's Dr. Jensen here. So this time we're going to be looking at a vitamin C titration. So this one, again, is similar to most uh, analyses of vitamin C, depending on, you know, they don't really uh, change too much. So it's a, vi you know, whether you're doing using fruit juice or you're looking at analysis of uh, vitamin C from various fruits. So this is our handout that's generally used. So usually the analysis is done as a titration, and here we use apple juice uh, because that's relatively clear. So essentially what we have is in an interaction with the, the ascorbic acid and iodine, uh, and then after the iodine is consumed, from, from the ascorbic acid, you essentially have excess iodine that then begins to react with the starch in the solution, so which gives you your indicator. So this is a starch iodine titration, and so what you get here is generally a kind of a black endpoint, and it usually is fairly easy to tell the difference of what the endpoint is, because usually it, it goes from kind of a clear to a black, and then really your only complicating factor is what kind of fruit juice you use. So other kinds of colored fruit juices can, you know, alter your, your kind of how the endpoint looks. So in this experiment, when we do this in the lab, we start out with a standard ascorbic acid sample. So this is usually a two part experiment. So the standard ascorbic acid sample is titrated first, and then we titrate against the fruit juice. Okay. So, in the simulator that we're gonna use, there's only two parts. So most of the data here is gonna be exactly the same in the simulator when we do this. So we'll end up in about the exact same spot. So the simulator takes us one more spot because they're really interested in a different value. So if you're answering the value from the simulator, it's for 10 milliliters of the juice, you gotta adjust a little bit at the end, okay? So let's take a look at are adjusted procedure. Okay, so in the adjusted procedure, it's really just a a few minor changes. All right, so from the simulator, so the simulator link is in the document. So the only one of the main main differences here is we have to prepare our initial potassium iodate solution. Uh, Usually when we do this in person, a lot of these solutions are already prepared for you. So there is some using the simulators to prepare a solution, which again, for a 112 class, you should be able to prepare and calculate uh, the various uh, components for making a solution. You'll, in part A, the reference vitamin C, each sample that we're titrating is gonna be the same one or is the same done the same way. So we have hydrochloric acid that's added, starch is added, and essentially an excess potassium iodide is added to, to each sample. So in part A, the reference ascorbic acid is already made for you. So the, that's kind of where the difference is from the handout is you'll see that this one already has a, uh, a molarity for the ascorbic acid, whereas in the handout, we were just measuring out, scooping out uh, ascorbic acid standard. So you have to do some calculation to get to the mass of ascorbic acid. And then in part, and so the, the calculations are pretty much the same for, for part A. And so you'll do at least three titrations. And really what we wanna get here is the average vitamin C per milliliter of iodine. Okay, so that's essentially gonna give our, it's kind of our, it's measuring, giving you an, an idea of how, how readily your potassium iodide solution responds to the, to, to the vitamin C. So, the different concentrations of your potassium iodate uh, or iodate solution is going to give you a different result here. So it really depends on the solution that you make because you're going to you're going to get a different spike or a different uh, response to to the vitamin C, right? And then in part B, we're using the same potassium iodate solution, and then our peach solution from the simulator has again the same components: HCl, starch. Potassium iodide. 
okay? And so we'll do three titrations, and at the end, you should be able to calculate the approximate mass of vitamin C in 40 milliliters of the peach juice. And then you can ultimately then uh, either answer the simulator's questions where they're really looking at 10 milliliters per uh, of peach juice, and then you can essentially look at or compare this to what is the actual amount of vitamin C usually found in peaches. Okay, so let's take a look at the simulator here. One second. All right, so looking at the simulator. So the link is provided. So again, you'll see very similar equations to what's in the handout. Here they list the solutions that are found in the stock room for the simulator. We are using the potassium uh, iodate solution. And each one of your samples is gonna have either the food sample or the ascorbic acid, one of the two, added with potassium iodide, hydrochloric acid, and starch, okay? So again, they give you the data here that you would need in order to, to calculate or produce a potassium iodate solution. Um, they already have the ascorbic acid molarity, which they already give you the details of how much that is in this solution. Okay, so let's look down here. So the first thing you have to do is make the uh, potassium prior or potassium iodate solution. And so here you got to pick you know, volumetric flask and scale. And so you can connect the two here uh, and then you can hit tear and that puts, brings it back to zero. And then we want to add potassium uh, iodate to it. So in this case, I believe the amount was 0.268 is the amount chosen here. So we can come over here and add 0.268 grams. Okay, and you'll see on the scale, the 0.268 show up. Okay, and then we can put that away. And then you can disconnect that and put the scale away. All right, and then back to the stock room here, we have to fill up our flask, so it's a 250 milliliter flask. And so you'll see the bottom of the meniscus hit the top of the flask. Okay, so we can put the water away. So this, in this flask is what we're going to use to titrate. Okay, so this is our potassium iodate solution. Okay, so I'm just gonna do one titration because they're all done pretty much the same. Okay, so you'll need the a blank or an empty 250 uh, Erlenmeyer. And so here is the peach solution. So this is what you'd use for part B or the ascorbic acid solution for part A. So I'm gonna take some of the ascorbic acid. So this, I believe here we're using 20 milliliters of the ascorbic acid. Uh, since there's quite a few of these solutions in here, you probably have to uh, do them one at a time. Uh, just don't forget which ones you used. So it's five milliliters of the potassium iodide. Okay. And let's see, it's three mils of the starch and four of the acid. So our acid, so four milliliters of the acid. and three mils of the starch. Okay. So this is our standard. Okay. And what I would do here is just duplicate these samples. So you wanna do at least three samples. Okay. And over here in the stock room, again, we can go to our glassware and pull out a burette, which you use the potassium iodate to fill. And so we wanna fill this up. Okay. 
Okay. And just like in previous videos, the best thing to do is to bring the burette to the flask rather than the other way around because it positions the burette based on where the flask is. Okay. So again, one way to do this is to do four titrations and do one that's just a throwaway to see where it goes. So again, if you just do this by one milliliter, we're our initial, you want to record our initial volume. So it's 0.00. .00. Don't forget that you can read two decimal places on a burette. So as we do one milliliter, you'll see the one milliliter is dispensed. And so we're looking for the color change here in our solution. Okay. And so since we really don't know where the endpoint is, doing it by one milliliter for the first one and then kind of getting a better idea and then using a second one to go back and do a more accurate one is, uh, and there we went. Okay, so it looks like around 16 milliliters for my sample here. Okay, and so then you could repeat this for all the rest of the, st the, the samples. Okay, so again, the, the stockroom solution for the peach has to be done the exact same way. So you'd put your 40 milliliters of, of peach solution. So you can actually see what that looks like. So we can actually do that one. All right, so you'll, you'll need, again, you can vary how much you wanna use and you're gonna get roughly the same, same, uh, same result here. So again, with the peach solution, you need the potassium iodide, You need five milliliters of that. You need the HCl. We need four milliliters of that. And the starch, you need three milliliters of the starch. And then again, the same same titration set up here. You can do one that's just by one milliliter and then it's gonna see where the endpoint is. And then say so we get a quick endpoint right there. And so what I would have done is duplicate your, your peach sample a few times and then you can do one real quick, see where the endpoint is and then do the others a little slower as you get clo close to the endpoint, so you get a more accurate answer. And so if we look at our, our data table here, you'll see a similar setup here. So the mass of the ascorbic acid, you have to calculate this based on the, the simulator, but you have an initial and final burette reading, which allows you to get the volume dispensed. And so the mass of the ascorbic acid per volume, essentially then you have three trials, which you will then average. And then in part B, you have 40 milliliters of juice. You have an initial and final burette reading, which then you can get the difference. And then so the, magne the, the mass, the milligrams of vitamin C is essentially your, your part A value times the total volume, okay? So if you're, whatever your volume is times this would tell you the milligrams of vitamin C in that sample. And then however many samples you do, then you'll average it. And then at the end, if you did three samples at 40 milliliters, you should get an average amount of vitamin C in 40 milliliters of the juice, okay? And like I said, then you can, you can take that and you can calculate the vitamin C content of a peach. And there's a Wikipedia page that lists the actual content. So you can gather that information from, from, the, from the wiki page as well. And then you can include that in your report. All right, so that is it for the vitamin C titration.